Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss measurement and units in just five minutes. The quantities used to express the laws of physics are known as physical quantities or physical parameters. There are few quantities which do not depend upon other quantities for their complete definition. Such quantities are known as fundamental quantities and their units are known as fundamental units. For example, length. Length cannot be resolved further, right? It cannot be resolved into any other physical quantity. So, length is a fundamental quantity. Quantities such as mass and time are also fundamental quantities. And those quantities which can be expressed in terms of these fundamental quantities are known as derived quantities and their units are known as derived units. For example, speed, acceleration and force. Here, speed is equal to distance upon time, acceleration is the ratio of velocity and time and force is the product of mass and acceleration. Based on this concept, a one more question can be asked in your GPSTR exam this year. For example, which one of the following is not a derived unit? Newton, Joule, Watt, they are all derived units. Only Kelvin which is unit of temperature is a fundamental unit. There are seven fundamental units of physical quantities in SI system. They are kg for mass, meter for length, seconds for time, kelvin for temperature, candela for luminous intensity, ampere for electric current and mole for amount of substance. Dimensions are the powers raised on fundamental units. For example, the dimension of length is represented as L. You write it in square brackets. So, distance, displacement, height, width, radius, wavelength and radius of gyration, they all have same dimension because they are all the measure of length. Similarly, mass is represented as m, we write it as m within square bracket and time as t, we write it as t within square bracket. So, a dimensional formula can be written like this within a square bracket, you write it as m raised to a, l raised to b, t raised to c, where a, b and c, they are the powers which are raised on this fundamental units. For example, we know that velocity is equal to distance upon time. Distance is length, so we write as L. Time is T, so we write as T. Now, dimensional formula for this velocity will become LT raised to minus 1 because time is in denominator. If you put time in numerator, it becomes minus 1. Similarly, for acceleration, it is velocity upon time. Now, just now we saw that the dimensional formula for velocity is LT minus 1. So, dimensional formula for acceleration will become LT raised to minus 2. In the same manner for force, you can do it for force which is equal to mass into acceleration. Just write their dimensional formula and multiply. So, M L T raised to minus 2 becomes the dimensional formula for force and so will be for weight, tension and thrust because they are all a type of forces. Also, one more important point is that the mathematical ratios, they are often dimensionless. They do not have dimension. For example, in sin theta, theta and sin theta both are dimensionless. Similarly, log x and exponential x are also dimensionless. We can use this point as a trick in finding the dimensions. For example, if you have some critical equation like this and you are told to find the dimensions of the parameters which are constants. Here alpha and beta are constants, right? Here what you do, we know that log of this relation will be dimensionless and so dimensions of beta will be equal to dimensions of v square. Now you can easily find the dimension of alpha. So m l minus 1 t raise to 0 will become the dimensional formula for alpha. I have shown the example of a very critical equation. In your exam a simple equation may be asked. And also note that dimensional analysis always works to check the correctness of a relation dimensionally. Actually, it is based on the principle of homogeneity. That is in a relation, the dimension on left hand side should be equal to the dimension on right hand side. Then only the relation is correct. If the dimension on two sides will differ, then the relation is incorrect. For example, in your previous year question paper, they have asked to check the correctness of the equation half mv square is equal to mgh using dimensions. This is a two mark question and half mv square means it is kinetic energy and mgh means it is potential energy. Half is a constant, 
So just to substitute the dimensions of the physical quantity. Here in kinetic energy, it is mass and velocity. Same way, do it for potential energy. You will find that the dimensional formula of kinetic energy and potential energy both are same. Hence, you can prove that the kinetic energy is equal to potential energy. Okay friends, according to me, if you have this much knowledge on measurement and units, none of your answer is going to be wrong in the exam.